Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy. Today I want to talk about making $1,000 a month in dividends. This is not something that I'm even close to getting to, but it's a very popular topic on YouTube when it comes to dividend investing channels. This $1,000 a month sounds great. People like to discuss it as being a passive income source, and compared to making YouTube videos, it is definitely more passive, but I would argue it's more difficult. Today we're going to talk about the logistics of making $1,000 a month in dividends, talk about how you can do that, some of the the problems that you could have trying to get to that point. And I just wanted to give my overall thoughts on it because it's become a very popular topic on YouTube. You can search $1,000 a month in dividends and there are plenty of videos out there. I'm gonna break up this video into different parts with timestamps down below if you'd like to skip around. The first part I wanna talk about yield versus growth. You have stocks that have incredibly high yields when it comes to their dividend payout, but aren't gonna grow that much overall. And it's the perfect balance of do you want your stocks to grow as well or do you want just the dividends? That's something that you need to take into account. Then I want to talk about dividend traps. Dividend traps are companies that pay a large dividend, but it doesn't make up for how quickly the stock price has fallen. I can give a recent example of one that I fell for that I probably should have known better than and I'm hoping that you will avoid making the same mistake that I have. Then I want to talk about how my portfolio looks right now. I'm going to show you exactly my portfolio size and how much money I'm going to be making every month in dividends and show how much money I would need in my account to reach that goal of $1,000 a month in dividends. And then I want to finish talking off the video with monthly versus quarterly dividends. For the most part, I don't know the actual number, but I would guess 95% of dividend stocks pay them quarterly, meaning every three months for a total of four per year. There are companies that pay uh, monthly dividends. I've talked about some of them recently. Uh, Realty Income, ticker symbol O, is one of my favorite stocks. It's known as the monthly dividend stock. And then there's QYLD, which is one of my hedges against the stock market continuing to fall that also pays out a monthly dividend. And that's something that you're going to need to take into account because this isn't something where every month you're going to get a check from every company. Some of them will pay it every six months. Some will pay it every year. But for the most part, it's going to be every three months, and you need to take that into account because you're not going to be getting a nice $1,000 check every month. So let's start off the video talking about yield versus growth. Yield is something that I think a lot of newer dividend investors fall for. It's the idea of you want to have the best returns possible, and seeing a higher dividend yield makes sense because you're going to be getting more money sent to you every quarter whenever the dividend is paid out. But you need to take that into account because... High dividend yields usually mean that the stock price is not going to go up significantly. One of the examples I wanted to talk about is QYLD, uh, which is my hedge against the stock market falling further. This is the stock that sells covered calls on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has been one of the most successful places to invest in the past five years. QYLD is very popular right now because of the increased volatility. It pays out a monthly dividend of 1%, which totals out to being uh, an annual dividend of around 12%. That sounds great, 12% a year. That's gonna be beating the average returns of the stock market. Sounds great. When you put up the five-year chart, for some reason this chart says today instead of five years, but trust me, it is five years. QYLD is down 16% in the past five years. During that time frame, uh, QQQ, which is the, the underlying asset they're selling the covered calls on, is up 146%. So QYLD sounds great when you take a look at the dividend yield. It's paying 12%. If that was the only thing that you had to take into account, that's fantastic. But the stock has decreased in value over those five years compared to QQQ, which has more than doubled during that time. And even as it's fallen in the past couple months, it's still up 146% in the past five years. So you need to find this perfect balance of how much do you want your stock to go up? Are you okay if it goes relatively flat? Or do you want it to kind of have a nice balance of both? Let's talk about one of my favorite dividend stocks out there. It was the top stock on my Dividend Kings video, which I will link above right now, which was ABV, ticker symbol ABBV, which pays out a 3.78% dividend and has had fantastic returns over the past five years. To make $1,000 a month from that with a 3.78% dividend, you're going to need to have an account balance of $317,000. Uh, the whole point of making this channel was to talk to people that were investing with very little money. I am nowhere near that, and I feel like everyone that's watching my channel is not at that point. Somehow, if you have an account balance that high and you're watching my videos, I'm very curious to hear why. You should be paying a, uh, a financial advisor to do that for you. But this is just an example of you have a relatively high dividend yield stock for a dividend king at 3.78%, and even with that high of a dividend payout, it's still going to take more than $300,000 to just make $1,000 a month. 
$1,000 isn't enough to live on, obviously. It's a nice supplemental income source, but dividend income is not as sexy as it may sound. 3.78% of your money coming back every year is fantastic when you do it over a lifetime of investing, but when you break it down to monthly, $1,000 a month isn't that great, and that's just showing how high of a account balance that you'll need. Then I want to talk about dividend traps. Dividend traps are companies that pay out a relatively high dividend payout, but the stock price does not increase over time. QYLD is a different example because it is a an ETF. It's a it's not a normal stock. It's not a company. But I want to talk about AT&T, ticker symbol T, which is a dividend trap that I fell for. It was a company that's been around for a long time. It was paying a dividend yield of around 7% but they ended up cutting the dividend, and in the past five years, it's down 45.6%. This was a stock that I owned that decreased in value significantly while I held it, and the dividend payout was nice, but it wasn't making up for the decrease in value over that time frame. So it's very important to not fall for the largest dividends out there. You need to find something that's sustainable. AT&T's dividend was not sustainable with the business model that they had, and as a result, they had to cut the dividend. So. I was down significantly on that position. I decided to sell it at a loss, write it off on my taxes, um, and put it into somewhere else that I thought was a better use of that money instead of sitting in a company that's gonna be decreasing in value over time. So that's important to think about. Let's talk about how my portfolio looks right now. I've, I'm relatively new when it comes to the dividend investing portfolio. I cashed out all my money to recently buy a car. Uh, I bought a 2014 Subaru Outback. I'm really going with the Pacific Northwest vibes. But I've decided to move all of my money from my savings account into this investing account. So it's relatively small, currently sitting at $1,842, uh, down $151, down 7.6%. It makes sense when you realize that the time that I was putting in most of the money has been in the past month and a half or two months. So during that time, this is mainly focused on dividend investing. I do have my largest position is in Microsoft and QQQ, which is a NASDAQ ETF. So it's not entirely focused on dividends. But for over the next 12 months, I'm going to be bringing in $45.34 of dividends. Not that exciting when you break it down like that. The whole idea of dividend investing for a young person like myself is that that money is going to be brought back in and immediately reinvested into those companies. It's a way that you can compound your wealth without having to put as much money back into that portfolio. And when you do the math on how much money... Um, that's coming in, it's giving me a dividend yield of around 2.46%, which is pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with that. But to make $1,000 a month with that dividend yield, I would need an account balance of $487,804. This is an example of $1,000 sounds great, not going to be realistic for most people. And then I wanted to finish off the video talking about monthly versus quarterly dividends. I'll put that breakdown of the expected next 12 months of dividends you'll see that it fluctuates from month to month. Not every company pays out a dividend on the same month. You'll notice that you see spikes every three months. There's a spike in June, September, uh, December, and March of next year. These are the three-month intervals for the quarterly dividends that most companies pay uh, their dividends out at. And then I do have the two monthly dividend companies with QYLD and uh, Realty Income, ticker symbol O, which bump up the rest of the other months. But on average, I'm going to be making $3.78 a month in dividend uh, income over the next 12 months. $1,000 a month in dividends is one of those things that sounds very plausible when you just think about the dollar amount. When you think about the amount of portfolio buying power that you're going to need to make that happen, one of my goals on this channel is to talk more about percentage yield instead of talking about dollar amounts because Percentages are the same for everyone. You have Warren Buffett investing. He measures his investment success in, in percentages. That's the same as how I would do it. If we're going to be comparing dollar amounts, I'm going to be nowhere close. That's why I think it's very important to put everyone on the same playing field. You're trying to look at percentages to extrapolate how well your portfolio is going to be doing into the future instead of looking at, oh, I'm going to be making uh, $45 in dividend income over the next 12 months, that doesn't seem worth it. I'm going to put my money into really risky investments and maybe not do as well over the long term. Slow and steady wins the race and $45 a year does not sound great. But as we're continuing to add to this portfolio, I'm uh, currently adding around $200 a month uh, in additional funds plus whatever money I make from YouTube. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so I can boost up this account. So maybe eventually I can get to $1,000 a month. Um, 
It's just the idea that over the long run, this is going to be an additional way to push funds back into your account. There is the positives of you can use dividends for whatever you like, but for someone that does not make a lot of money and does not have a lot of extra money to throw into those accounts, I think dividend reinvesting is a great way to look at it. Extra $45 a year is money that I was not going to have otherwise. So I wanted to talk about some important parts about dividend portfolios and how to view them. We talked about yield versus growth. You have companies that are going to be paying very high dividends that aren't going to grow over time and could actually go down, which leads into dividend traps. These are companies that decrease over value faster than the dividend yield is bumping up your account value. So an example was AT&T that's down 45% in the past five years, even though it was paying out a dividend yield of around 7% for a while. They have had to recently cut that dividend because it was too high. Then I wanted to talk about what a normal dividend portfolio looks like. I showed them my dividend portfolio currently makes around 2.46%. To get $1,000 a month, I would need an account balance of $487,000. Not realistic. We're looking at percentages and we're looking at these dividend income as being a way to invest it back in your portfolio, not as a way to supplement your income. I think that's the best way to look at it right now because an extra $45 a year doesn't sound great, but when you're doing $45 a year, reinvested back in your portfolio every year for the next 40 years, it's really gonna add up over time. And that's the whole point of this compounding interest. We wanna keep money in the portfolio and we wanna keep money funneling into the portfolio. So you can do that from making money at your job or you can do it with dividend reinvesting and I'm choosing to do both. So I'm very curious your thoughts on making $1,000 a month if you think that it's kind of a toxic topic that we see on YouTube or if you think that it's kind of realistic depending on what type of goals you're going for in the long term. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it with that like and subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.